my name is Don Dagenet. I'm one of the volunteer preview speakers for the Kansas City Lyric Opera Guild, and it is my pleasure to give you a short few minutes of conversation about the opera Norman by Vincenzo Bellini, which is the second production of the Lyric Opera's 2010-2011 season. Uh, this is actually the first opera by Bellini that the Lyric Opera has ever produced, and of course the first Norman. So I am thrilled that the opera company is making up for this oversight and filling this hole in the repertory and giving us an opportunity to listen to the music of this really remarkable composer. Um, Norma is, many people feel, probably the quintessential bel canto opera. Bel canto is an Italian phrase which just means beautiful singing. Now that doesn't tell us a whole lot. But it was a particular style of singing that developed in Italy in the early 19th century, sort of an outgrowth of the earlier Baroque. And it consisted of a very particular style of composition for the voice. Uh, long melodic lines, which required a great deal of breath control on the part of the singer. Uh, very dramatic uh, difference in high and low notes. A, a wide range of singing was required for bel canto. But most importantly, the embellishments, or opera people say the coloratura, which is added to the melody to make it appear very fancy and very ornamented. That was an important part of bel canto. Um, in the early days of the 19th century, there were three giant composers who were most famous for bel canto compositions, and those were Giacchino Rossini, and uh, Gaetano Donizetti and Vincenzo Bellini. Now, we all know of Rossini and Donizetti. Rossini wrote many great numbers, including uh, The Barber of Seville, uh, Cenerentola, which is a Cinderella story, and lots of other opera favorites. Uh, Donizetti also wrote lots of wonderful opera favorites. One of his is The Daughter of the Regiment, which the Lyric Opera is going to be doing later on this season, next spring. Uh, but he also wrote famously Lucia di Lammermoor, which is one of the most dramatic and famous of the Bel Canto operas. Uh, Bellini uh, didn't write as many operas. Rossini wrote 37. Uh, Donizetti wrote over 70 operas in a long career. Bellini died young. He died at the age of 36, about the same age that Mozart was when Mozart died. It was a great tragedy, and he left behind only 10 operas. But among those 10 operas, we have lots and lots of wonderful music. So many people regard Norma, the piece which the Lyric Opera will be performing, as the high point of Bellini's composition. Uh, the story of Norma, it takes place in ancient Celtic England uh, during the time of the Roman invasions. Uh, and it is, is a story of the Druids who lived in England at that time. And it's a classic love triangle story. What we have here is the title role. Norma is a Druidic priestess who has, in violation of her vows, had a love affair with a general whose name is Polione and had two children by him, in fact. Uh, but unfortunately, she is now being challenged in that love affair by one of the other priestesses. These priestesses don't seem to have a lot of attention to their, to their vows, whose name is Adalgisa. So it's the Adalgisa and Norma, both loving Polione, love triangle, which is the basis of this story. And I won't get a lot more into the plot, but that's really what it's about. A love triangle, kind of a typical sort of thing that you might find in many operas. Um, but it, it, it gives occasion for Bellini to write lots of wonderful music. And there are many musical highlights in, in Norma. Uh, there's a duet for the two sopranos, actually the soprano who sings the title role and the mezzo-soprano who sings the secondary role, one of the great operatic duets for two women's voices ever written. And there's a wonderful trio that all three of them sing. There's a famous tenor aria for Polione, which is one of the classics. You've heard it probably many times before. You'll recognize the music. But by far the most famous piece of music in Norma is the soprano aria that occurs in the first act, which is called Casta Diva. And Casta Diva is regarded by many people to be the pinnacle of bel canto composition. And it's an extraordinarily difficult aria, long melodic lines requiring absolutely exceptional breath control by the soprano. High ranges, low ranges, lots of coloratura. It's got everything that typifies bel canto music all wrapped up into one gigantic, very, very difficult aria. There's a famous story about that. The very first soprano who sang it, who was the leading Italian soprano of her time, Guiditi Pasta was her name, when she saw the score of Norma, she went to Bellini, this is before the premiere at La Scala in Milan, and said, you've got to rewrite it. It's just too hard. Nobody could possibly sing this piece of music. And Bellini tried his best to convince her that it was possible to sing it, and she just refused to even consider singing it. It just looked impossible on the page. So he finally said, I'll make you a deal. Study with me for a week, and we will rehearse this aria, and if at the end of a week you can't do it, I will rewrite it. 
but if you can, then you will perform it in performance. Well, that seemed fair, so she agreed to that. So she coached with him for a week, and at the end of the week, she had mastered the aria, and he told her, this will be the great success of your career. Well, it was, because when she sang Costa Diva from the, from the stage of La Scala, it absolutely brought down the house, wave after wave of applause, and it's been a great hit ever since, uh, which really makes Norma, in a way, the kind of quintessential bel canto opera. Um, so how well has Bellini fared over the history of opera? What do other people think about him? As we wrap this up, just think about this. A little bit later on in the 19th century, the two great opera composers who, op who occupied absolutely, totally different worlds were Verdi, the great Italian composer, and Wagner, the great German composer. One of the very few things that these two people had in common at all was that they both loved the music of Bellini and the opera Norma. When Verdi was asked which of his operas a young student should study to learn how to compose, his standard answer was none of them. Study the operas of Bellini, because that will teach you how to write great Italian opera. And when Wagner was asked what he thought of Bellini, he pointed out that Bellini is where he got many of his ideas, and when he, in fact, was an opera house conductor early in his career, he conducted more operas by Bellini than any other composer. So, what better recommendation could you have? Verdi and Wagner both thought Bellini was their favorite composer. I hope to see you there when the Lyric Opera performs Norma.